Hey, welcome to Electron Line. In the previous few dozen videos, we talked a lot about diffraction. We did not, no. <laughs> welcome to Electron Line. In the previous several dozen videos, we talked a lot about interference patterns between rays going to multiple slits, two slits, three slits, four slits, and so forth, and we had all kinds of what we call interference patterns. But the one thing that we ignored to mention was that any time light goes through a very narrow slit, there's also diffraction. And what happens is, if we just simply take a single slit right here, the width of the slit is equal to A, and as light goes through the slit, and if the wavelengths of the light are similar in size to the width of the slit, then the waves, the energy of the waves, will diffract or bend around the opening of the slit and go in all different directions. And what happens then is that the different portions of the beams will begin to interfere with one another, just like when we have multiple slits and the light coming through multiple slits interferes with one another. Same will happen with different portions of the very same beam going through a single slit. There will be an interference pattern, and because of that, we have an overall diffraction pattern. So the bending of the light is called the diffraction, and because of that, there will be mutual interference between different portions of the beam going to a certain part of the screen over here and because of that we'll have high and low intensity regions high intensity low high low high low notice that the diffraction pattern kind of de decreases in intensity the maxima as you go further and further out away from the central maximum becomes smaller and smaller and smaller meaning the intensity becomes smaller and smaller and smaller as you go further out what we will see later was is that when we combine the diffraction properties of light with the interference properties of light with multiple slits, that we have to take that into account and that the intensity of the interference uh, peaks will diminish because of the diffraction pattern that will then be overlaid with the interference pattern. We'll see that later. What we have to understand here is if you kind of take a look, notice that if we take a, diff a specific spot on the screen right there and we see that different portions of the beam travel towards that spot, that the portions of the beam that are down to the bottom have to travel a greater distance than the portions of the beam at the top. For example, if the ray at the center of the beam has to travel exactly a half a wavelength farther than the very beginning of the beam, then this ray and this ray will cancel each other out and there will be destructive interference over there. And if you then take the next beam over there and the next beam over here, those two will cancel each other out. And if you take the next beam and the next beam, those will cancel each other out because you'll have pairs of portions of the beam that are simply a half a wavelength out of phase. And so when they get to the screen, half a wavelength out of phase means destructive interference and you will not see anything and you'll actually will get a minimum right there to exist. In other words, half the beam will cancel out the other half of the beam and the result is you'll see no light there at all. There will be a minimum. So that's the concept of what we call diffraction. And diffraction will cause diffraction patterns on the screen which will have to be taken into account when we look at not only single slit situations but also multiple slit situations. And we'll see that in some later videos. Again, what we can see here is that the extra distance of this portion of the beam halfway through the slit. So if we go from there to there, that's the width of the slit. And this is halfway through the width. So we can see that this extra distance traveled by this portion of the beam compared to this portion of the beam is half the width of the slit times sine of theta. And if those happen to be exactly half wave, wavelength out of phase, so if this is equal, if, I'll put an if on there, if this is equal to a half a wavelength, then those two will destructively interfere with each other and therefore you see a minimum over there. So that's the basic concept. I don't expect now, uh, I don't expect that you understand exactly the whole thing about diffraction, but at least the basics of diffraction, that if you have a single slit, different portions of the beam will interact with each other. There will be either constructive or destructive interference, and therefore you'll see either a minimum or a partial maximum. A partial maximum means that not all of the beam will cancel out with the rest of the beam, but that a small portion will actually get through, and therefore you see a maximum, a diminished maximum in a way, away from the central maximum. All right, hopefully that gives you a kind of a 
feel of what this is about. If you're interested in that fraction, keep watching. I'll have lots more videos that tell you exactly how to calculate all the various things about a that fraction pattern. And then later we're going to combine that with interference patterns to see how that works with multiple slits. Because the that fraction properties will also impart some changes in how we look at the intensity pattern of a multi-slit uh, interference situation. So anyway, that's a good start. If you're still interested, keep watching and we'll get much more detail about how to calculate the diffraction patterns.